for sure, like you see a lot of carbonized material after the acidity spike. There's a huge acidity spike in the ice record at that point. Yeah. Um, it would have taken a while for uh, vegetation to come around again. And so especially it's going to affect the large animals because they depend on the vegetation and they need a lot to eat, like elephants. Um, whereas the smaller animals, you found they made it through this, um, especially the ones that burrow underground. So they were normally safe when it happened. Uh, uh, oh, I see. And... and uh there's another aspect to this. Uh, it's, a, it's a minor little side note, of course, but in on uh, on your book cover, Earth Under Fire, you have uh, at the bottom and the, and the top uh, the the famous Nossos uh, bull jumping scene. Mm. C- could you talk about that a little bit and what your inter- I've been interested in this myself, what that might might mean. But uh, I, I reckon you have it there for a specific purpose, right? Yeah, I discussed that in the book. Um, the bull was a symbol of the superwave in the ancient uh, legends and myths. Um, they call it the bull of heaven, and uh, it's displayed as Taurus. And you see the, the, the bull Taurus charging out there in space with its horn aiming towards the galactic anti-center, which is the point directly opposite the galactic center. So if you can picture the bull like the superwave, it's charging away from the galactic center the way they've pictured it. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about uh, people who are not only ar- artists, but also scientists, uh, b- being able to depict th- these concepts for us. Um, and in the uh, Gnosis uh, uh, tradition, this was something that was actually a sport. It was done in ancient Greece uh, in, in in Crete at Knossos, um, they would have these acrobats uh, which were chosen and, and in a theater, sort of like a, what we would think of like a bullfighting arena. Mm. But in, in those days, the sport was uh, not to harm the bull, but the bull would be charging to you, towards you. And it, the goal was to jump at right when the bull was about to spear you. You jump up and somersault over his back and land behind him. And symbolically, what that portrayed was humanity's survival of the superwave hmm. because it meant that we ended up coming back down on our feet after it was over, after it had passed. Oh, that's very interesting. And we have obviously one person in front of the bull and one behind the bull. almost seems like they're helping the 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 uh, the one who's actually skipping over it and and that particular one i don't know if there was a color difference as well between male and female uh what i heard at least right. so we have white and, and red there who is skipping over then uh in that sense do you think oh i don't know i i haven't really analyzed uh, in t- to that depth uh, i don't i wouldn't know if there's if one should um interpret at that level okay yeah but, uh, How about other bull? I mean, again, we have the famous Lascaux paintings of the uh, the cave art of of the bulls there as well. It's oh, even no. speculated that some of the that there are star patterns in there depicting Pleiades and and other things as well. Uh, do you think that this is of the same tradition as well? Because bull worship is one of the ancient, most ancient worshipped uh, animals on the planet. Yeah, and the, the fact they radiocarbon dated that to be around seventeen thousand years old, so that shows you that uh, at least that particular zodiac constellation uh, dates from at least that period because it was in the cave painting they the artist de- depicted the Pleiades so therefore you realize that they're uh, sort of portraying Taurus the bull in the heavens and um, so this indicates uh, that this message, the Zodiac message, which was there to portray this whole concept of the superwave, and it points out the center of the galaxy, it gives the, the date of the out, when the outburst reached us, using the, the symbology of uh, stars, the, the way it's pointing it out. And so you realize that that was begun at least that far back. That's amazing. And is there anything else you can say about the what you call the the original message or the or the zodiacal message that uh, it's it's a it's a story. This is the story encoded into the uh, the the myths that we get through the 
the stars. W would you say that that's correct? Yes, and <clears throat> there's actually several myths that are tied to the zodiac, and um, it's like a collection of myths, really, and they they point to the same story. Um, the one that, that was the key that triggered me to realize what had happened in the past was the one about uh, Sagittarius shooting his arrow at the heart of the scorpion, mm -hmm. which is an ancient Greek myth. And uh, so that led me to uh, chart the arrow of, the, of Sagittarius, and I saw that it was off its mark if he was shooting at the, the heart of the scorpion. But then I realized the stars move over time, and when I put the positions back in time, I found a date when it was targeting this, the heart of the, of the scorpion, Antares. And that came up as 15,865 years ago. Hmm. And it turns out when you go and look at the geologic evidence, that's when the Ice Age came to an end and we started get going into a warming trend that even today geologists haven't really explained why that happened. Uh, and you find also beryllium-10, <clears throat> which is an indicator of cosmic ray activity, started going up at that time. Right, uh, and... I mean, in one way, I'd reckon then with all these things considering an, an ice age is actually a, not as big as a problem in itself, but, but is that something that you think we might be heading towards as well? I hear various things out there, various claims that we're heading for a minor ice age again, or some people say the opposite, obviously, that we're, we're warming up. Uh, but even a consequence of the, oh. of the global warming might be that we get another ice age because of the... Uh, the Gulf Stream, etc., being being um, changed and things like that. But what 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 do you think oh. about that? Well, to go into a major ice age like we had th uh, between thirteen thousand seventy thousand years ago, um, you'd need a super wave to bring this dust in, uh, and it's sort of like you need a major perturbation of the Earth's climatic system for that to happen. Uh, what? people usually refer to as due to the solar cycles, like if the sun goes through a time when it's not putting out as many sunspots and it's not quite as hot as it is, which they found this to be the case, uh, you could go into something similar to the little ice age that we had about four or 500 years ago. Yes. Uh, but that's not really the same thing as a regular ice age. Th that's right. And, the and ice sheet formed. And people talk a lot about the... the uh... NASA as well and other organizations talk about the activity of the sun. They're expecting that to kick up, of course. But uh, I think that so far we had the biggest um, X-class flare on, on record, at least uh, back in 2003. Uh, and we might be looking at a situation in the next couple of years where we get uh, f fairly high activity from the sun. But it, it, that in itself, I'd reckon that, that you wouldn't, maybe you're not too worried about that. You're, you're more obviously worried about the bigger event that might come um, a little bit later, or basically any time here, right? There's no uh, Well, there's no you, you worry about it if you were doing air traveling, because when you get at high altitudes, you have less protection from the atmosphere, and so a very serious flare like some of these we've had in the last few decades uh, could be uh, at least give you uh, a lot of radiation exposure. It might not kill you, but um, it would... Could, not be good for you. Yeah. And especially if you were an astronaut, you'd have even less protection if you were like out in the space station. And I, I think they've taken precautions and they have sort of uh, lead lined containers where astronauts can get into if there seems to be a coronal mass ejection heading to Earth. They can get in these containers and take shelter. At least I hope they <laughs> have yes. made plans for that. Do, do you see um, do you see anything of this at all connected with with the uh, the Mayan some of the Mayan prophecies 2011 2012 as as well could they be spot on do you think in terms of the uh, our entering into the the fifth sun the next sun uh, well you do see a cycle in the data on the ice core data that's close to their fifty they, their cycle is around fifty. 5,126 years, and you do see something that's around 5,700 plus or minus several hundred years. So um, that's something to consider. And uh, plus, 